Um, so today we have uh, Professor Dr. Caroline Roga. Um, you are a Professor of Sustainability Innovation and Policy uh, and Co-Director of the Sussex Energy Group at the University of Sussex. Um, and you are, and as I got it right, you're now in Karlsruhe because you're also Deputy Head of Policy and Society at Fraunhofer ISI uh, in Karlsruhe. So um, that sounds all quite busy and we are in the uh, NEST uh, group, very interested in your work on, on policy mixes, a lot on the energy transition, uh, previously a lot on emission trading scheme um, work. And today we are very interested in your, um, your presentation about the policy mixes. Um, and we are very happy to have the uh, interaction between everyone, as Julius said. So please use the chat to interact. But I would like to remind you that the chat is not a place to ask questions. Um, I will, after your presentation, after Caroline's presentation, I will come back with how we are going to deal with how to ask the questions. But before that, I will uh, give the floor to you, Caroline. And then Caroline, the floor is yours. Thank you, Abe. Um, and um, welcome to all of you. It's um, really great to be um, speaking to you about policy mixes for sustainability transitions, a topic that um, has been part of my research for quite a while now and part of my teaching as well. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next hour. Um, I have basically um, prepared um, the a little um, introduction to the policy mix literature. Um, and then want to unpack a bit this broader conceptualization of policy mixes with you. And then go a bit, make links to the earlier webinars on the technological innovation system and the multi-level perspectives and show you two examples each, how policy mix thinking manifests and can be applied within these approaches. And then finally draw some conclusion in terms of some challenges of the research um, as well as um, the exciting prospects for future research opportunities and then we go into the um, q a session where you actually have in the beginning a bit time to write down your questions and then um, we go through them um, before um, i get started i want also to run a little poll because i just want to know where you are at in terms of um, policy mixes so how much do you know about policy mixes for sustainability transitions already so i'm just gonna um, share that poll and it's just one question and you should see it now and it's basically ranging from you know um, you don't know anything about policy mixes yet um, and um, you are already an expert so just take the one that is closest to where you're at at the moment and there's also a question for the practitioners who have um, joined the call um, uh, and a special welcome to you Yeah, I'm just gonna um, show the results. Um, and we actually have quite a spread, um, some um, beginners, but um, several of you have already heard a bit about it. And um, actually quite uh, a significant share, 60% have a basic understanding of key ideas or already apply this or plan to apply um, policy mix thinking in your work. And there are also a couple of experts and I hope you stay on to the Q&A session so then you can add to the, the questions and your answers as well. Okay, so that's good to know, know for me. Um, so basically the introduction um, and um, the initialization about broader policy mix concepts may be most relevant for those of you who just have heard a little or nothing yet. And then the applications, I'm sure they will be something also for those um, more advanced. Um, and yeah, so let's just um, get started. I want to start with um, the introduction to the policy mix literature. And this actually comes at a very good time, this webinar. I just started a new project in June, um, which has 
um, as part of its content policy mixes, um, multi-level policy mixes in the context of energy mobility transition. So um, me and um, the, the team that already has joined, um, Arthur Aids and Chi Song, um, have already started to look into the newest developments in the literature. And so I want to share um, some of our early findings with you. Um, so in general, and um, you know, the, there's a trend in growing popularity um, in the academic publications on policy mixes. Here you can see the blue line, that's the generic um, anything on policy mixes um, that you can find in Web of Science and Scopus. And you can see that um, you know, we have um, over 200 publications um, a year at the moment. Um, and um, really that rising trend has started in 2006. Um, whereas the orange line is basically our field of transition studies and innovation studies, where you see that's now about a fourth of the new publications coming out, um, so around about 50. Um, and if you look in the totality of what has been published in terms of policy mixes, it's quite a lot. It's over 2,000 publications, or in our specific area of policy mixes for transitions and innovation, it's over 300 publications, so quite a lot. Um, I, um, if you want to get a quick introduction, then maybe it's nice to play around this um, search yourself. So here is the search string that you can use in Web of Science and Scopus and can um, look a bit about, you know, the, the publications. But let me highlight um, one thing. Um, the popularity of terminology goes like this. People call what we're talking about today policy mixes, but they also use other terms. And another very popular term is the word policy package. Um, um, but you also will find um, authors using the word policy portfolio and instrument mixes. So you just need to be aware of um, that being used um, and therefore search in this broad range of publications. Um, if you now just um, look at the orange line, so really the studies on policy mixes relevant for sustainability transitions, um, then I'd like to share with you um, a different diagram. Um, it's a Sankey diagram and there in the middle, you can see the um, 20 top um, journals that have published um, work on policy mixes um, for innovation and transitions. So you can see that research policy and energy research and social science are the preferred outlets um, next to technological forecasting and social change. And on the left hand side, you can see the organizations, the universities and the research organizations um, that have been contributing to um, the policy mix studies in innovation and transition studies. And on the right hand side, you can see the uh, authors or 20 of um, the, the key authors in the field that have been contributing to a very rich um, debate in the field. And um, what I want to do in the following is to help you a bit to make sense of this large literature, right? And um, it's not that you want to read 300 or let alone 2000 um, publications, but I want to help you a bit um, in terms of making sense of um, what are the main differences, what are the different entry points. So for that, um, the first way that you can look at this is um, which policy field is the entry point or the focus of a certain study. And you yourself may have that specific entry point that, for example, you look at climate policy mixes or you look at environmental policy, perhaps for biodiversity protection, or there are scholars and studies that then more work on the development policy I mentioned, talking a lot about coherence of policy. And of course, the original innovation policy, looking at innovation policy mixes and so on. And there's also a rich debate in regional policy on smart specialization policy mixes and so on, right? So that's, and all of these use their own type terminology, have their own um, research interests. So that's quite good to know these differences. But what you see nowadays in the past five years or so is that this is also working or moving closer to each other. And there's, there's more exchange happening between these different policy fields. Um, the second way to distinguish this um, line of literature is in a very simple way uh, by distinguish between narrow and broad conceptualization of policy mixes. And what do I mean by that? Um, basically with narrow, I mean a focus on really different instruments and how they interact and perhaps how they're best being combined also over time, how they're sequenced. 
um, and um, the broader perspective, which goes beyond instrument mixes and, for example, also considers policy strategies, considers um, policy making processes, but also characteristics such as credibility and so on, right? And the third way of making sense of this growing policy mix literature is um, the different disciplinary approaches that the studies are drawing upon. And there are, are key, three key um, disciplinary approaches that you find um, of relevance for particularly policy mixes for sustainability transition. It's um, the literature um, routed in environmental economics, the one in policy studies, policy design studies, and innovation and transition studies. And there may be others, but um, these three um, are quite central. So before I go on and um, tell you a bit more about this, I wanted to see again um, where you're standing. Um, so I prepared um, another poll, um, basically on these three um, ways of making sense of the literature, just so that you in a way can make sense where do you stand, and I and we get a sense of you know the interest here in the room and um, the background in, in the virtual room, I should say. Okay, so I'm just gonna share this um, second poll. And you can choose all the policy fields, for example, that are relevant central in your work. So it's not only one that you need to mention. And yeah, so I just give you a bit of time to, to go through this. And just a few more seconds. It's looking good. So let me share um, the results with you. Okay, so let's look at the first um, way of making sense of the literature, the policy fields. Um, we have um, a really good spread and the, the typical thing in transitions are like there's really a focus on energy policy. Well, it is the, the winner, but it's not as pronounced as in, in the different way. So um, we have a quite a diverse field. Um, yeah, you can, can see all of those that I mentioned, um, including a few on working on financial policy. Um, and in terms of the second um, way of making sense, the narrow and broad, um, the, the clear um, majority goes to adopting a broad approach um, and, and also sometimes narrow and sometimes broad and some who still um, are finding out. So maybe after this webinar, um, you will be able to make uh, yeah, some, some um, decision about this. And finally, in terms of the disciplines, um, we do um, have some who um, use environmental economics, but a clear um, focus here, which maybe is not surprising, um, is from innovation and transition studies, but there are also some others. Um, if you don't mind, I'm happy for you to type the other field um, discipline that, that um, you're drawing on um, in the chat, um, because I'm always keen to explore um, other um, disciplinary approaches for policy mixes, so that would be great. Um, yeah, and we do have a significant share of people who have looked into policy design and policy studies. So thanks for, for sharing that. Um, what I want to do, and um, that will be, I try to cover it in a way that it's relevant for all of you, is to have a little bit of a deep dive on these disciplinary approaches. Um, 
And this is something that I took from a special issue that um, came out in Energy Research and Social Science. So if you want to read after the webinar a bit more about this, uh, feel welcome to um, check out the references. Um, I will also make the slides available afterwards so that you can easily access um, all the links and publications and so on. Um, so um, here you see these three that are outlined, environmental economics on the left. And I'm just going to walk you a bit through this so you get some sense of um, this, these disciplinary differences. And I also am going to provide um, some selected <laughs> definitions for one for each of these um, disciplines. Um, so environmental economics is um, one typical definition um, would be that it's focusing um, on a situation where there are several instead of one policy instrument that is used to address a particular environmental problem. Um, so it's really adopting this focus on instrument mixes and it has already started early on. Um, what you can see there on, on top as example one is a study um, within the European Union funded Interact project, which um, was led by Steve Sorrell. Um, and they investigated for the first time really in depth in climate policy interactions. And the context was the introduction of the European emissions trading system and how this novel market-based instrument would actually fit within the existing policy mix. Um, so that was a huge um, literature stream that um, has happened there and um, has focused on these interactions, for example, with renewable support. Um, if we move on to policy studies, um, this is really a quite separate field. You know, these two um, bodies of literature haven't been too much communicating with each other and has, have developed independently also with their own terminology and logic. Key authors in that field are Mike Howell, Jeremy Raymer, um, um, Benjamin Kashore, and um, one scholar who brought this into the transition field was Florian Kern, and I put his definition with Mike Howlett in, in a 2009 publication in there, which is still a definition that you find uh, adopted in many um, policy mix studies. Um, and you can see it goes already beyond the instrument mix definition, um, quite predominant environmental economics, by outlining, okay, policy mixes are complex arrangements of both multiple goals and multiple means, so instruments, yeah, tools, and which in many cases have developed and developed incrementally over many years. And this development over time is quite in focus and, in, and the scholars also look at, okay, why then do policy mixes become inconsistent? Um, why are then, do we find incoherence? And so they develop um, uh, mechanisms for explaining that in terms of, okay, things haven't been probably replaced, but maybe just layered on top of each other um, and drift happening and so on. So this is something that has been a uh, focus in these studies. Um, and now the third one, um, innovation studies and transition studies. Um, the first um, example that you see there is by Kieran Flanagan and colleagues. And I really encourage you to read it. I consider this like a seminal article to get into this thinking on policy mix. It was really about saying, well, we need to reconceptualize our thinking about um, policy mix is too simple. They really looked into interactions, drawing actually on environmental economics and what has been done there a bit earlier. Um, but then going further and saying, well, but we also need to consider policy processes. Uh, something that I picked on quite a lot. And also uh, um, highlighting, well, you know, um, policy mixes can be complex and there may be different policy fields and governance levels. Um, so we need to coordinate, yes, but there are limits to coordination. Yeah? Um, so um, the definition that I picked here um, is one that I developed with Christine Reichert. Um, and this is um, taking or building on um, the Flanagan work and um, incorporating the policy processes and saying, you know, policy mixes um, should be considered as a combination of three building blocks, the policy output the elements, which are the policy strategy and the instrument mix, but also the policy processes and policy mix characteristics and which all can be defined on dimensions. I will go into that in a bit more detail and with a larger visualization so you actually can see something. Um, and um, um, what I want to say in closing is that really these three um, literature streams, disciplinary streams, um, until recently haven't talked much to each other, right? So it's very rather close communities and you will see that in all their studies. So you need to be aware of that. They have their own terminology. 
they are sometimes really contradictory. So what means one thing in one literature means something very different in another literature. Um, so it's also for the now emerging more interdisciplinary studies really important to communicate how do you define your terms um, and so that we actually can draw a comparison and from between the different disciplines and work interdisciplinary. Okay, so that was the um, first part, the introduction. And so the second part is just going into this um, one broader policy mix conceptualization um, and looking a bit more unpacking what it um, in corporates. So, um, Here I decided to put an uh, older um, version fr from the policy mix concept. It looks very similar to the one you um, have seen right now from the research policy article in 2016, but it's actually a version um, that um, Christine Reichert and I put forward in 2013 um, as a working paper. It was the basis of the Gradient project, which looked at um, policy mixes for renewables in Germany. Um, focusing on the impact on technological and structural change. Yeah. Um, it was a very much a project organized by um, economists, environmental and innovation economists, but who took in some ideas from political science and policy studies as a starting point. Um, and so I put you, to you all the links, the one from um, this colorful uh, representation where you can see the elements in blue, yeah, with the policy strategy and the instruments, um, the policy processes in orange and the characteristics in green. And you can see a longer list of dimensions, which later um, got a bit thinner. Um, but I also put the original link to the working paper because it contains a very long annex. And if you ever want to go back to all the studies before and how they have defined and approach policy mixes and the different terminologies, that's a good starting point, that's a good resource so that you um, just look at the annex of that um, working paper. Um, so I have prepared for all of these building blocks some material. Um, clearly the time won't be sufficient to go in detail with all of this, but rather I wanted to see what's the focus of your work and then decide how to focus the time of this talk. So I have one final poll um, and it's basically asking you what is the focus of your current or also your upcoming work. And I particularly did not only say research, so also for the practitioners among you, um, in terms of policy mixes for sustainability transitions, you can um, adopt multiple answers um, because you may be working on different projects. Um, and then let's see who get, what gets the most votes. And then I can talk a bit more about that um, in what follows. So I'm just gonna launch. Um, this poll is just one question, so it should be fairly quick, but it ranges from you working on instruments and their interaction, so not more the narrow understanding to while well, you're working on the elements, so the policy strategy and the instrument mix, or the focus of your work is more on a policy process, perhaps the political scientists and policy studies scholar um, among us. Um, yeah, maybe the policy mix characteristics, a combination of all of this, or a combination of some of this, or none of the above, or you don't know yet. Just a few more seconds. Okay, so here are the results. So the tight winner is policy processes. So I shall spend a bit more time on that, but I, I think it's actually also something very close to like my own um, passion in research. Um, so I'm happily happy to answer that call and maybe also a bit on um on on the elements but actually we have a good spread um and uh, yeah we have also several of you um who are combining everything um in a very broad and holistic way and also some who do a combination of um some of these different aspects 
and yeah, um, one person who perhaps is interested but isn't doing this in the research at the moment. So um, for those who don't know yet, maybe after this webinar you get a um, better um, feeling for what may be um, come a focus of your work. Okay. So I could just close this window again and move on to um, just quickly this slide. In a sense, the question was a bit difficult because I just asked about the building blocks, if you wish, of a broader policy mix concept conceptualization. But I didn't ask you about which links you're studying. Um, and that takes it maybe to the next level. And I just wanted to show this. And if you want to explore this a bit more, um, there's a chapter that you can look up in a Mm, a relative new handbook of policy design, which was written, um, and that's maybe for those among you who are policy design and policy um, study scholars um, or have this background, um, where I try to write it and link it um, from our innovation and transition studies perspective um, to communicate this to policy design scholars, yeah, to make these connections more specific. And it's also, as you can see, has evolved a bit over time where initially my focus was more on technological um, change, technological innovation, and has become much more of a socio-technical um, change perspective. And you can see nine different ways of what you can potentially focus on in studying the link between policy mixes and social technical change. And you can also see it's like co-evolutionary in both directions and we um, will unpack some of this um, later. Um, okay, so not too many people looked at the instrument mix. For those of you who want to work on this, I put out a quote, um, which I think is really key. And I'm uh, not going to go into instrument interactions and important design features and instrument types. Um, but this quote, I just want um, you to be aware of. It's a study from um, technology, um, technology policies and where scholars looked um, quantitatively um, um, to see if they considered interactions, if they would be able to confirm earlier findings. Um, and they were not. So if you really take interaction seriously, um, then we may really need to rewrite the textbooks on the link between policy and innovation. Um, so I do think also those working on the narrow um, you know, policy mixes, there are really important advances to be made. Um, policy strategies for some interest. Actually, in, in the reality um, of what we see now, policy strategies are everywhere, right? We have the Paris Agreement, we have the SDGs. <laughs> We have climate plans for 2050 and so on. We have them on different levels, national, um, regional, city level. So it's um, something that um, policymakers have adopted quite rigorously. Um, how far it is then being implemented is a different story in terms of instruments put in place to achieve um, what has been put out as a target and as a job objective and strategies. But what we do know is these strategies really matter for innovation and system innovation for transitions. Examples are the Kyoto Protocol, um, the 2020 targets in the European Union on energy efficiency, um, greenhouse gas emissions and renewables, but also specific technology targets, right? So studies that include these, um, that makes a lot of sense yeah, to do, to do that and not only to look at the instruments which are implementing these strategies because they can unfold their own um, effect on innovation systems, on the social technical system, on what's happening by providing long-term strategic orientation. Characteristics, there was not such a great interest for those of you. I, mean, I put three studies um, that, that are really worthwhile reading up if you want to go into these directions that you can explore. There is um, quantitative and qualitative evidence to show it's really um, matters also to explain the effect on innovation. Um, and not only describe the nature of the policy mix, but there was interest in policy processes. So I take um, a bit um, more time um, for, for this. So um, basically um, in the blue box, you, you can see one possible definition of um, policy processes, um, but I want to tell you a bit more why and how to incorporate policy process within policy mix thinking, right? Um, um, and basically there are four reasons, and I think um, all of them make it uh, quite um, 
important to do consider policy processes first. Of course, very obviously, um, you know, policy making processes shape the policy strategies and instruments. Um, but they can also have a direct impact on innovation, how some um, earlier studies already have shown. Um, so it's, it's worthwhile to keep that in mind, the policy style, how um, communication is organized with stakeholders, um, how participatory um, the, the policies are being implemented or not, can have a direct impact on innovation. Um, but I think maybe the most important point for, our, for transitions is that um, because these are long-term processes, we actually will not get around in, in seeing a co-evolution of policy and system change, um, so technical change, and um, will there pick up um, issues of um, resistance, of vested interests, which help explain why we might not see the stringent policies which would be needed for an accelerated um, transition, for, um, for example, low carbon or um, zero carbon energy systems. Um, and finally, like a pragmatic reasons, if, if you take this into consideration, you form your findings, even if they focus on instrument interactions, you can make much more informed, politically informed policy recommendations. So how to incorporate this is then basically, we can draw on existing studies from a different field, from, from um, the um, theories of policy process. And um, here I just listed um, five, which um, Florian Kern and I reviewed earlier um, to see how that could help us in making better sense of the politics of transitions and about the co-evolution of policy mix and socio-technical systems. Um, importantly, most of these um, theories don't necessarily adopt a policy mix perspective, but rather explain the emergence um, or adoption um, of certain um, single policy instruments or outputs. But so you need to, um, if you want to work with this, adjust this perhaps a bit. And also oftentimes they stop at um, explaining a certain policy output, but don't go beyond to the policy outcome and so the change in the socio-technical system. Um, but I did, um, there, there is a special issue which try to bridge this um, and work on um, harnessing opportunities from bridging innovation and policy studies and that appeared in research policy um, last year with nine contributions. So if you're interested in this, I encourage you to check out these contributions. And I also brought um, two examples, which I just quickly want to like as a teaser show um, um, of um, researchers who have already attempted to build integrated policy transition frameworks both for a European example, which may be um, interesting for our audience from, from, from Europe, but also from South America, um, um, which, which works on um, the energy both, one zero carbon homes, and the other on renewables. And one adopted a policy um, feedback theory and explaining um, change in the social technical system and actually a failure of an ambitious target that eventually was, um, uh, terminated and not achieved. Um, and the other explains, um, yeah, how um, the policy mix for renewables has been um, also taking up industrial policy considerations and how different actor communities, um, so drawing on the advocacy coalition framework, have been shaping the policy making process and the resulting um, policy mix, so the elements and how this has changed through changes in a social technical system um, through policy learning yeah, over time. Um, so if you're interested in this, I think these are two studies where you can get some ideas of how this integration um, can be done. Okay, so that was um, basically like a bit of foundation and diving into the broader policy mix um, conceptualizations. And what I want to do now is just to give you briefly yeah, two examples of how has this policy mix thinking, this in particular the broader policy mix thinking been adopted um, in the technological innovation system approach um, and in the multi-level perspectives. If this is the first webinar you're watching, there are recordings, they are available now um, from Marco Heckert and Frank Riel, so it may be useful then to go back to those later. Um, so first about um, the technological innovation system approach. Um, of course, policies have always played a role there. Um, also in the identification of um, 
what are some bottlenecks, um, which functions are not working well, and so what kind of combinations of instruments, system instruments, do we need to make a technological innovation system function properly? The broader policy mix thinking um, takes us to, I guess, the next level, if you wish. And here's an example um, from um, China, um, um, solar water heating technology in, in Shandong province. And um, the interesting thing here is that it um, takes up um, a multi-level policy mix perspective. So what you can see on the right is the timeline from 2004 to 2016, drawing out both the policy strategy on top and the instrument mix on bottom, but differentiating between the national, so the state level, the provincial, so the regional level, and the city level, right? So an urban or city level. And I'm looking over time at the interplay, the dynamic, dynamic interactions between these different levels and changes in the technological innovation system over time. Um, so that's, that's one example of an application to um, to this from this broader policy mix concept. If you want another one from Europe, there is one in Germany that I also reference that you can look up. And another classic I just need to put in here, um, even if you would have heard it before, is the work from Paula Kivima and Florian Kern on policy mixes for creative destruction. Um, and um, they have basically extended the TIS functions, which you may have heard in the webinar um, from, from Marco Heckert or have seen before, with destruction functions. So in addition to the seven, just added four additional ones and later added a fifth one that one should pay attention to um, in the context of transition processes. And then they looked at the example of the UK and Finland, and here I just brought um, this for the UK for low energy innovation, how do policies address these different functions um, by counting the number of instruments. And what you can see is there is not so much attention to the, the destruction functions, right? Um, except for the control policies, which is about, um, for example, carbon pricing, uh, floor price um, at the ETS, um, the emissions trading system and so on. But in terms of changing the regime rules, um, yeah, such as new general laws for the um, functioning of the energy market, or reducing um, subsidies for dominant regime technologies, um, yeah, that hasn't really occurred a lot. And what hasn't happened at all, um, no policy attention to this is changes in social networks, getting um, you know, uh, incumbents perhaps replaced or at least added new entrants to the table of discussions. Okay, this quickly about TIS. Um, now um, about the MLP and again just um, two examples also to be um, just quickly and the one, the first one um, actually just came out I think last week um, and I heard about it from Benjamin Sofako, one of the co-authors of this article and I thought it's really useful. So I put this right in here. It's, um, you can see the classic um, uh, this picture from the from the multi-level perspective with the niche, the regime, and the landscape level. And then you can see six numbers, intervention points, um, where policy could intervene um, in transition processes. Um, starting from the niche, what we already have seen a lot, but also addressing this destabilization of the regime, but also picking up on, well, okay, if we have coal phase out, for example, then going to number four, we might want to reach, have policies for retraining um, the past then employees of um, coal mines, for example, yeah, and addressing the structural change. But it's also picking up things which haven't been studied so much and they um, actually um, survey several studies so you can take this as a starting point. And if you're interested in one of these, look at studies that have already started to address, for example, multi-regime interactions and policies needed to coordinate this, for example, between energy and mobility. Um, so that's the one. Um, and, and the other, um, um, also quite quickly brushing through, is like taking um, a, a study that um, looked into socio-technical scenarios of the future, so like building histories of the future and trying to um, achieve certain transition pathways which come out um, through modeling and deciding for 
certain pathways that you would want to have, how to achieve them through transformative policy mixes. The example here um, that you can read about um, is uh, for Germany and the electricity system. And the pathways are very different in terms of the technologies being adopted. One is large scale. So carbon capture and storage in lignite, offshore wind. The other is small scale, decentralized onshore wind, solar PV. And it also is other actors that are active, that are investing. And it also means the one is um, just technological substitution. The other is broader system transformation also with behavioral change. So that also re requires different policy mixes. Um, and nothing about the details, but just three um, dimensions all of these um, to achieve these um, transition pathways, you know, um, getting um, components for getting the direction right and um, getting agreement, buy-in by um, society through participatory visioning is really key. But then of course, having these consistent instrument mixes to implement um, strategies both on a niche level and against uh, phasing out uh, regimes, um, talking about also ex innovation, so addressing structural change. And finally, one thing I haven't brought up yet, but that's institutional adjustment. It's actually something that's developing in the literature now. You know, the institutional arrangements do play a great role in what policy mixes work and can be actually adopted and what done, don't. Um, so for transformative policy mixes, that's a key point. Okay, so I'm at the outlook. Um, and what I want to do there is just make you aware of two challenges um, before going to future research needs. And the first challenge is, of course, if you decide to work with policy mixes, then you need to map them somehow, right? You need to decide what's relevant, which policy mix, which instruments, which strategies do you ex include and which do you exclude? And there is a really great article by Jan Ossenbring and colleagues um, who has developed guidelines for doing so, you know, and the starting point is, of course, the research questions that you have, what you're interested in, um, but then they um, show um, also there are these guidelines, adopt, apply them for the case of energy storage in California. Um, so I really encourage you to, to look at that if you want to work in your research with policy mixes. Um, it's really helpful for the policy mix mapping, including which entities are relevant for governing this policy mix. And to then arrive at what here is in the middle, it is gray one policy mix, the key elements, the key strategies, the key instrument mixes. And there are two main approaches that you can go about this. One is top down and one is bottom up. And there hasn't been too much attention to this in the past. It was rather something um, implicitly done and not communicated, but I think in the future um, we should think a bit more about this and, and make a conscious decision what's the proper way to do this in our study. Where basically the top-down approach is saying, well, what's the strategic intent? Like, for example, if you take the perspective from a city and they have a certain um, vision for, for them in terms of climate neutrality, for example, right, um, then well, they implement strategies with their governing entities and put instruments in place that they can. They don't influence the national level, but they do this on their level. And so you map those. Um, bottom up would be the other way around. You look at the impact domain. You look at what are you interested in in your research. Um, in, in, in Jan's case, it was um, um, energy storage, but it could be for you for or you know um, social innovation, energy transition. It could be mobility, um, e-mobility, or something like that. And then you um, think, okay, the actors in this system, which policies, strategies, and instruments, what are relevant for their behavior? So you know, you really start from the actors in the system, and and then you identify, okay, this instrument and that is relevant. And it doesn't matter whether it has been put in place by the city or by the region or by the nation or it's something from the European Union or elsewhere. Um, you identify all of them, um, and then track it to the strategies, and um, then have your mix. Now, some studies adopting a combined approach, right? Then you get actually a larger coverage, takes a lot of time, um, but um, sometimes that really may be um, what you need to do. And then it captures both the intended and the actual effects of a policy mix um, in, in, in later studies. And basically this is all, all, to do all of this is of course like a precondition that you can do actually a policy mix study, right? Because you need to know what's the policy mix that I'm, that I'm looking at. Um, so um, I, I really encourage you um, if you want to work um, substantially on policy mixes to, to read this paper. I built a whole um, 
module in our MSc in energy policy around all of this so that, pe that, that our students at SATSEX can model energy policy or map energy policy mixes. Um, yeah. Second challenge is um, policy mixes are complex in the real world, really, really complex. And they're getting more complex, it seems, right? By layering more and more on top of it. Um, so just counting policies won't just do it anymore. But then how do you make sense of the complexity, at least outside of qualitative studies, just need to have new indicators. And I just brought two example studies. Um, one is um, from, um, from a special issue and research policy um, where the office um, Schmidt and Severin developed a policy activity index um, on the balance of instruments in the mix um, in different OECD countries um, on, and the technology specificity. Um, and so um, that's something that you could um, look into. Another is for these new characteristics. Um, you can of course try to devise new indicators by running surveys with those actors in the system and then creating um, new indicators. Um, and here's an example. Um, but I think there's still much work that needs to be done um, and um, new methods which may be out there to do this. Okay. So I'd like to, to wrap up. I, I do hope that um, from this webinar, it has become clear that by now, when you look at the policy mix research in innovation and transition studies, that it's not just about instruments, optimal combinations of them and their interactions, it has become much more, right? But there's still like this perception, misperception that policy mixes is about this and only this. Well, actually, I, I want to make the, 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 the point that, um, and I hope I got this across and from your um, polling, I also see that you're working on this broader way of thinking about policy mixes for sustainability transitions. Um, there is much to say about that. Um, and part may, maybe why we are entering this um, broader way of thinking about policy mixes is because it's now established from past research that, you know, just one instrument like carbon pricing, whether that's through taxes uh, or through trading. So it's, it's not sufficient by itself to get the transitions going and to um, get them going quickly. Um, yes, it addresses the negative externalities if the price level is set right, um, but there are more market failures, there are more system failures and you know, structural and transformational system failures that need to be addressed by policy mixes. And um, there's a growing recognition of that. That means for us as um, innovation and transition researchers um, um, that we can focus our attention on these broader issues um, of relevance for sustainability transitions. And I just list three and they are more, but um, one is um, about the credibility and destabilization being key in accelerating transitions. And that's what we need if you're you know, in a climate emergency after all. And so what that means for us is also to look at the green recovery packages or the green deal and really see, well, is it just rhetorically green or is it really green? You know, is there a consistency between the to big talk and what we see on the instrument level that are implemented? Is it like 30% of the funding going to green issues or more or less? Yeah, so we need to have that um, because what it, um, that look and um, attention to this. And I think that's happening um, if you watch, for example, Twitter discussions about what's being adopted. Um, so that focus is there in the community, both in the academic and practitioner community. And I think that's really key. Um, because automatically, automatically, if there are not really green deals and green recovery, then it also makes it not credible that there really is political will to drive um, a low carbon transition. And that will have repercussions on the actors in the system. Um, destabilization is another key point here. Yeah, you can put in lots and lots of new um, funding and instruments, but to really accelerate things, you also need to phase out the things that are standing in the way, such as fossil fuel subsidies. And so that needs to be done along with new green deals. Feedback, policy feedbacks and transition process is something I really want to underline, which is important to adopt this co-evolution long-term perspective. And it's really at a, a well aligned with us a transition in the transitions community to look at that, to look at the effect of policies on coalitions 
um, how they are strengthened, how they are weakened, how we potentially can compensate losers so that they will really continue to support for um, strong policies to drive the transition. Um, and a final point is um, that I think there is um, room and um, need to stronger integrate um, politics and policies um, of um, on four transitions through inter and transdisciplinary research. You know, we have the stream of politics of transitions and we have this lots of focus on policies for transition, but really to bring this together, to not just look at, okay, how do we get certain policies adopted as an output, policy output, but also then continue on the outcomes and the co-evolution of that. So in a nutshell, there's lots of room for future and more research for all of us. Um, and we need advances conceptually, empirically, methodologically. If you want to read more on that, um, there's a chapter that I can recommend you that I wrote recently where you can see some of these research gaps be spelled out a bit more, both for narrow policy mix conceptualization and broader ones. Um, if you are really new to the policy mix and you now think, oh, you really want to read into this, I think these are like the six publications I would recommend to get started reading. And they're actually a bit more than six because two are special issues, the 15 and nine contributions. But I think that really gets you like an exciting starting point. Um, I revisited in preparing for this webinar some reflections I prepared two years ago on the developments on policy mix research. And I think they still hold. So I just put them in here. You can read them later um, to, to reflect a bit again on, on what I said. And, and finally, I'm really happy to exchange um, now in a question and answer session, but also later, you know, at upcoming conferences and so on, on your research and policy mix. Um, and of course, particularly in the context of what I'm doing at the moment, which is looking at policy mixes in social innovation, where actually there hasn't been really much attention, like I found one study or so um, looking at that. And that's what I'm doing in a sonnet project for different um, fields of social innovation and also in the context of energy mobility transitions, um, which I've just started. So I thank you very much for your interest and attention and I'm looking forward to your questions. And I hand back to Abe who maybe wants to say how we organize the collection of questions and so on. Yes, thank you very much, Karen. Very interesting uh, presentation.